Hello everyone! On today's episode of Tinkering with Terrius, I wanted to do a how to use video for the KD3005D digital power supply from Corad. There aren't a ton of features to go over on the power supply, however I thought it might help anybody that is interested in purchasing one of these to know what they're getting into. So first up, you have your voltage display, your amperage display, your overcurrent protection which can be enabled, your constant current light, your constant voltage light, and the lock light. The front connections, we have positive, negative, and earthed ground. This ground is directly connected to the earth of the power cable from the power supply itself. For this video I did set this back to the settings it came with out of the box. So the voltage and amperage are set at what it was when I first took it out. When you first power it on, chances are it's going to be set at 30 volts and you're probably also going to find that the current is set at 5 amps. Now I assume this is because it went through a quality control at the factory and that in that process they ramp it all the way up to make sure that everything is in spec. The important thing is to not plug anything in until you have turned down the voltage and the amperage because if you plug anything into this right now and you have it connected to your circuit it will destroy whatever you have it connected to theoretically depending on the maximum voltage of your circuit. So in order to change the values initially you have to press in on the rotary encoder and that will give you a selector. Every time you press it it will change which digit it is operating. So we're at the ones, we can go down to the tenths, hundredths, and we can go up to the tens. So we're going to go up to the tens and we are going to turn this down to zero volts. We're going to do the same thing on the current. We're going to take that down to zero amps. The power supply will remember what the voltage and amperage are when you turn it off. So if we turn it off now, turn it back on, it will come back on at zero volts and zero amps. So I would recommend when you're done using the power supply to always bring it back down to the zero volts and zero amps just to be safe. So there are two different ways you can operate the knobs on this unit. It has two different modes. In mode one, which is what it comes with default out of the box, you have to press in the encoder in order to select the place value and adjust it. There is a second mode, however. In order to send it to the second mode, what we have to do is we have to press both the current and the voltage button for two seconds. The screen flickers. Theoretically, this means that it is able to be adjusted and you can see it adjusts. In mode two, you aren't required to press down the voltage or current buttons in order to start adjusting the voltage and current. It just adjusts automatically. When you start turning it, you can still change place value by pressing it. That's still functioning. The current you can change. This mode would come in handy if you're going to be changing the voltages and the amperages a lot and you don't want to have to constantly press in the voltage or current buttons in order to start changing the voltage and current. So when you're hooking the power connectors up to the power supply, it is good practice to always plug in the negative connector first and then the positive, as well as when you're disconnecting to unplug the positive first and then unplug the negative. This practice is generally good to use as well when you are hooking up to a circuit. That way the ground is always connected to the circuit. It makes it less likely that any stray voltages or anything will damage any of the components. I'm going to hook a 5 watt resistor up to the power supply here. And the reason for that is I want to show the power supply switch from constant voltage mode to constant current mode. So right now we have the current set at 0 amps. As you can see, 0 amps and we have it set at one volt. But since there is no load on the power supply, it is running at one volt, it is in constant voltage mode. However, the moment we attach a load to the power supply, it quickly switches to constant current mode, and it kills the voltage. So now if we start adjusting the current, you will see that the voltage will start to rise until we get to the point where the voltage becomes the limiter. At that point, the constant voltage light will pop on, and no matter how much we turn up the current, nothing will exceed it. You can see we hit the one volt, and now no matter what we turn up the amperage to, go all the way up to one amp, you can see that it's still in constant voltage mode, 
so the amperage is not going up past that one volt. If we adjust the voltage now, the amperage will go back up again. So in order to use this power supply in constant voltage mode, you will of course set the voltage at whatever you want it to be the maximum for the circuit, and then you adjust the amperage. If you want this to operate in constant current mode, you do the opposite. You set the amperage at whatever the maximum you want for that circuit to be is, and then you adjust the voltage. This power supply also has the ability to turn on overcurrent protection. When you do turn on overcurrent protection, and the power supply hits whatever you have it set to for amperage, it will actually cut off the current. So if we set the current down to 100 milliamps, and then we turn on overcurrent protection, it should theoretically turn off the current. So when overcurrent protection is on, whatever the current is set to will be the limiting factor for the unit. If we set this at 500 milliamps, it is flowing just fine, it's running. But if we adjust this down to 400, overcurrent protection kicks in and the voltage goes down to zero. The power supply basically turns off the output. This can be very handy to set if you have something that is very, very current sensitive. If you hit that limit, you don't have to worry about damaging any components. So once overcurrent protection has triggered, even if you adjust the current, it will not untrigger until you actually press the current button in. Once you press the current button in, the power supply will go back to running as normal. So in order to turn off overcurrent protection, you do the exact same thing as you did to turn it on. You hold in the current knob for two seconds. The power supply also has a lock function, and the lock function is activated by holding in the voltage knob. When this is locked, the knobs will have absolutely no effect on the power supply. To turn it off, same process. You hold the button in for two seconds and it turns off. So that's all for this video. I hope it was informative or helpful. If you like this how to use basics video, then please give it a big thumbs up. And if you know somebody that was curious about this power supply, definitely share this video with them. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for future episodes of Tinkering with Terrius, then be sure to leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't already, then be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.